Uh, probably a lot of you know Imran. Imran Hussein, Member of Parliament for Bradford East. We are asked for five minutes. <laughs> Friends, comrades, brothers and sisters, it's an absolute privilege and honour to be with all of you here today. Last year, on a warm summer day with clear skies, I remember standing out on a cricket pitch in Bradford with a backdrop of the skyline of the city behind me and hundreds of people Many couldn't be seated before me. I know why they were there, and you probably know why they were there too. Because as you stand before me today, one year later, you have come to see what they did before you. Like you, they came to see, they came to hear, and they came to be inspired by my good friend and comrade, the man who is now the leader of the Labour Party. The man, the man who in September will still be the leader of the Labour Party. And the man who will be the next Labour Prime Minister. <laughs> now, on a side note, if by any chance you are not here to see Jeremy, I know that Owen Smith has plenty of MP chairs. <laughs> So it's great to see that looking around the room, I can see many faces, so many different people. I see young and old. I see men and women, middle class and working class. But according to some, I should find such a composition surprising because we are repeatedly told time and time again that Jeremy only has the support of the middle classes from the suburbs and that he cannot reach out to the working class voters in the north. Well, let me tell you. And, and let me also tell you, as a working class lad from the inner cities of Bradford, whose first ever job was sweeping floors in Morrison's supermarket, I tell you, you are wrong. <laughs> and indeed, the gathering this evening just shows the strength of Jeremy's appeal. So can we finally prove all those who doubt Jeremy's broad support wrong and put this issue to bed with where it belongs. Can I get a cheer from everyone who is proud, like me, of being working class? Yeah. And can I, can, I get, can I get a cheer if you're going to be voting for Jeremy Corbyn? Yeah. Richard Bergen has just returned and can I say to the people of Leeds and I mean this I have never met a finer more principled member of parliament well done to the people of Leeds
And whilst we're at it, let's put another myth to bed. The myth that we are somehow unelectable under Jeremy Corbyn. Now let's look at the facts. Since Jeremy was elected as leader of the Labour Party, we have won by-elections in Oldham, in Sheffield, in Ogmore, and in Tooting. And top of that, we have won mayoral elections in Liverpool, in Bristol, and in Salford. And of course, we cannot forget the London mayoral election with a huge victory for Sadiq Khan. a fair, principled and policy focused campaign against bitter smears and racist allegations from his Tory opponent and we won. Friends and comrades, if this is what unelectable looks like, then it seems I've been getting the definition of electable wrong all along. Because these huge victories to me show that this party is electable, this leader is electable, and I'm sure you will agree from these results and the facts that we are winning across the whole country. It is clear that the tide is turning and that British politics is moving away from the old, tired way of doing things. Why is this happening? Why does Jeremy have so much support? And why are we winning elections even though the pundits and the naysayers are saying we shouldn't be? The answer is honestly quite simple. It's because people want change, radical change. They want a party that is true to its social democratic roots and a leader who stands up for all what he believes in. The Labour Party was set up over a hundred years ago to advance the cause of the working classes. And whilst we have done great things in government, I feel that over time we have strayed from our origins. And that is not to say, however, that we must abandon all pursuit of power in exchange for reclaiming all of our principles and origins. Nor does it mean that we should reject our principles in favour of power because I do not believe that you can only have one or the other. Yeah. I believe that we can have both. They are not mutually exclusive. And, and a Labour government that acts on its principles to affect real change is the one that our forefathers in the Labour movement have wanted. Indeed, that is the Labour government that they built over 70 years ago. Jeremy is that change which people want and he is that leader. And because of him and because of all of you here tonight, we are that party now. Friends, Labour has come home. high unemployment, low wages, poor and uneven economic growth, a crisis in our NHS, a public transport system that cannot deliver, and a straight up unequal society. When faced with this, a country on the brink of crisis, hovering on the edge of disaster, is there any wonder why the dream of a Labour government under Jeremy Corbyn resonates so strongly that people want change and that they vote for a party that truly offers it, not just false promises and hollow slogans. Jeremy offers change and he offers hope and he stands on a platform of renationalising the railways to bring down train fares, scrapping, <laughs> scrapping tuition fees, scrapping tuition fees so that education is not out of reach for the poorest, establishing a national investment bank to spread growth across the country, implementing a higher minimum wage to live thousands out of poverty, restoring, restoring the 50p top rate of tax to ensure that those with the broadest shoulders bear the greatest burden, cracking down, cracking down on tax avoidance to prevent the rich and the powerful escaping their duty of paying their fair share. And most crucially, brothers and sisters, most crucially, 
of all. He stands on a platform opposing the government's cruel austerity agenda, which has demonstrated the country's not only reason, but reason of ideology. These are not, these are just the socialist policies that we and the country have been crying out for. They are sensible policies that we need to fix our society now. And in the past 10 months that Jeremy has been leader of the Labour Party, he hasn't just been, and Richard and I will tell you this, he hasn't just been talking about policy, he hasn't, uh, uh, he hasn't just been shut away in his office talking to a bubble about how he will uh, oppose uh, the government and how we will develop the Labour Party that we all want and need to see. He's been out there fighting the Tories. And actually, sorry, sorry, actually he's been out there beating the Tories. <laughs> and for those, for those that say Jeremy Corbyn is an ineffective leader, he is anything but, because under his leadership, as a team, a team I I'm a very proud member of. We have brought this government to task. Stop plans forcing every school to become an adapt academy, regardless of the wishes of the parents and teachers. Stop changes. Stop changes to tax credit, which would have made some of the most vulnerable in our society even worse off. And stop. Stop key aspects of the previous Chancellor's budget, such as changes to personal independence payments which support the disabled. <laughs> Friends, because of Labour blowing holes in George Osborne's budget, we sank the austerity Chancellor, the Chancellor who made life so much harder for ordinary people. And, and we're only just getting started on the new one. <laughs> Philip Hammond, watch this space because John McDonald is coming for you now. <laughs> having been elected not even a year ago is already changing the face of politics and quite frankly if you think this is all that he can do you ain't seen nothing yet and I promise you today as a member of parliament who the membership voted for who the membership campaigned for who the membership raised funding for, I promise the members in this room and up and down the country, I will always stay true to the membership of this great movement. <laughs> Friends, as I come to the close, Together we can build a better party, a party of principle but also of power. Because only with that power can we build a better country that we all need and that the people deserve. A country that we can all live in and love, a country that will stand up for the weakest and a country that embodies some of the great ideas that the Labour Party started to build in 1945. Back then, 71 years ago, the Labour Party started to build a better country out of the carnage that followed six years of war. I don't have to remind you that this was the government that created our great NHS and welfare state. And, and at the next election in 2020, we must build a better country and a better future again, following the carnage left by 10 years of Tory austerity. Electing Jeremy last year was the first step on the road to doing so. So we must not falter. 
we must re-elect him as leader. And together, 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 we must complete that journey to the steps of Downing Street. Thank you very much.